Welcome. Thank you for viewing this presentation on the Enterprise Application System. My name is Amy Parker, and I'm a specialist on the Early Childhood Education Grants Team in the Office of Early Learning and School Readiness. Please make a note of any questions that come to mind as we go through today's content, and we'll give you our contact information at the end of the slideshow so that you can reach us. Today, we will be reviewing our purpose, talking about the provider application, and walking through the steps of completing student applications, entering ELA scores, and entering attendance. Please know that you can reach out to us at any time for answers. This presentation is for programs who use the Enterprise Application System to report program, teacher, and child level data. This presentation will provide an overview of the EAS system. The purpose of the Early Childhood Education Grant is to maximize a child's early educational experiences before kindergarten and provide high quality early learning services to eligible four-year-old children. Today we will be concentrating on the EAS student applications, including student level reporting requirements for the early learning assessment and attendance. Programs are required to report teacher qualifications, student enrollment, monthly student attendance, fall and spring early learning assessment scores, disability category and demographic data. The Enterprise Application System, also called EAS, is the software program used by some programs to report this information. Depending on the type of program you are, you will use one of two different data reporting systems. The determination is based on the grantee type, even if you subcontract with an entity that would fall into a different category. Example, an ESC subcontracts with both a local public district and a Head Start license by ODJFS to provide services. All of the children would be reported in EMAS because that is the system the grantee uses to report. It follows the grantee, not necessarily the location in which the child receives services. If you are attending this presentation and you determine that you are an EMAS reporting program, this information will not apply to you. Every year, a program must complete a provider application before entering student information. Most grant recipients have already completed this for fiscal year 17. However, we do want you to know that there is a step-by-step -step tutorial available on our webpage that you can refer to in case you forget the steps next fall. Before we get into the technical details of student applications, I'd like to review the child eligibility changes from last year. Don't forget that starting back on June 26th, programs must use the common application developed by the Ohio Department of Education and the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services when determining child eligibility. Any child enrolled after June 26th will be required to use the form. Programs must keep the form on file for review. Keep in mind that the directions on the form are aimed towards the family, not the provider. The form has two parts. The first part is for ECE-funded children. It can also be used as the first part of the application for families that are seeking publicly funded child care. If after completing the first part of the form, a family is screened as potentially being eligible to receive PFCC, the program will give them the second part of the form and instruct them to contact the local JFS agency to determine eligibility. Any questions about the second part of the form must be directed to Job and Family Services. This year, only children who are at least four years old as of the district entry date for kindergarten are eligible. A child, except for a child on an IEP, cannot be enrolled on their fourth birthday if they did not meet eligibility requirements. For example, if a child turns four in December and the program has an open spot, the child cannot be enrolled unless the child has an IEP. Also, if the child is eligible to go to kindergarten, they are not eligible to receive ECE funds, even if the child does have an IEP. Age is determined by the cutoff date, not the enrollment date. Programs are required to determine which children are eligible to receive grant funding and enter an application for each of these eligible students. Our website has a link to a tutorial that will guide users through entering student applications. We're going to walk through a sample student application now. EAS is accessed through your SAFE account. Note that the link to the program does not match the EAS acronym. The link on the list of web systems in your SAFE account reads Early Childhood Education Expansion, which is the previously used name for the grant program. 
The provider application must be submitted and approved prior to entering a new student application. If you have not yet completed and submitted your provider application, please review the provider application tutorial. After the provider application has been submitted and approved, click on the New Student Application button in the Student drop-down menu to add a new student application. Enter the date of birth. Enter the first and last name, exactly as it appears on the birth certificate, and click the search button. Click on the Here link to add a new student application. Enter the student's first, middle, and last name. If the student does not have a middle name, check the student has no middle name box. If the student has a suffix at the end of the name, please use the suffix drop-down. Do not add the suffix to the last name. Enter the student's date of birth. Please note that the child must meet the age eligibility requirements of the grant. The system may or may not catch ineligible children, depending on your cutoff date. Enter the mother's maiden name, select gender, select the ethnicity and native language. If two boxes are checked for race on the JFS 01121 eligibility screening tool, please select multiracial. If Y is indicated for Hispanic or Latino, select Hispanic for ethnicity. Enter the last four digits of the student's social security number, if available. If the social security number is not available, check the never issued an SSN box. Enter the city of birth. Enter the state of birth. Enter the student, the state student identifier, SSID, if available. If this information is not available, leave blank. Select the application period that matches the fiscal year in which the student received early childhood education services. Select the county where the legal school district of residence is located. Select the student's legal school district of residence. Enter the residency begin date. This is beginning day of the fiscal year, July 1st, or the date the student applied to your program, if after July 1st. Indicate whether the student has an existing individualized education program. Select a disability condition, if applicable. Select the poverty level percentage. Select the proficiency of English language. Select the initial provider. Select the lead teacher teaching this student. If the lead teacher is not listed in the drop-down list, you will need to add this teacher in the staff tab in the provider section. After all the required information has been entered in both the student information and the application information sections, click the Create New Student Application button at the bottom of the page. The first tab of the student application is Student. Basic information that the user just entered about the student should show on this tab. To make any edits, click the pencil icon, make the needed changes, and then click on the Update Student button. The second tab of the student application is Application. Here users can add either the program's Ohio Department of Job and Family Services license number or the Ohio Department of Education Building IRN, as well as edit application information, legal district of residency, and provider list. Click the pencil icon by either the ODGFS license number or ODE Building IRN to enter information for the building at which the child is enrolled. Once entered, click the Save icon. The Legal District of Residence allows the user to edit the existing record by selecting the pencil icon to the right of the record or add new information by selecting the Add Residency District at the bottom. 
When selecting the pencil icon to the right of the listed district, the following information should be entered. Enter the residency begin date. This is the beginning of the fiscal year, July 1st, or the date the student applied to your program if after July 1st. Enter the residency end date if applicable. It is left blank if the student is still living in that county. When selecting the Add Residency District button, the following information should be entered. Enter the county. The drop-down will list all Ohio counties. Enter the legal district of residence for the new county from the drop-down menu. Based on the county selected above, the drop-down will provide the list of school districts for that county. Enter the residency begin date. This is the beginning day of the fiscal year, July 1st, or the date the student applied to your program, if after July 1st. Enter the residency end date. This is the date the student moved from this county, if applicable. It is left blank if the student is still living in that county. The list of providers section allows the user to edit the existing record by selecting the pencil icon to the right of the record. Now click on the Docs tab. Click on the birth certificate or other electronic document link at the left in the yellow box. Browse to your electronic copy of the student's birth certificate or other document and click Upload. Now click on the Status Flags tab. Click on the Submitted link to forward the student application to the department for review. Now we have completed an EAS student application. Grant recipients are required to report assessment scores. The Early Learning Assessment is a formative assessment designed to use information collected during direct observation of children. Teachers use the information to plan activities and opportunities that will support the continued growth of each child. Ohio, in partnership with Maryland, has developed an assessment for preschool-aged children called Early Learning Assessment. The Early Learning Assessment is a part of Ohio's Ready for Kindergarten Assessment System, a joint project of Ohio's Department of Education and Department of Job and Family Services. The assessment is designed to aid teachers in determining where children are in their readiness for kindergarten. The Early Learning Assessment will provide information for teachers about children from early preschool to kindergarten. Programs must complete the 10 learning progressions during the fall and spring windows. The fall window is August 15th through November 14th, and the spring window is February 15th through May 14th. Our website has a link to a tutorial that will guide users through entering student assessment scores. In order to enter early learning assessment scores in the Enterprise Application System, programs must first convert Skills, Knowledge, and Behavior scores into Learning Progression scores. The Early Learning Assessment Bridge Score Conversion Form is used to obtain a Learning Progression score. This must be completed before moving on to the next step. You can find the Bridge Form on our website. There are cases when a teacher will not be able to determine a score for a child on a skill, knowledge, or behavior. In these cases, the teacher will enter an end score in the bridge document for the unscored skill, knowledge, or behavior. A score of N will then be calculated at the learning progression level within the bridge document. Programs are required to enter a reason code any time a learning progression score of N is reported. There are a number of reason codes to select from within EMIS or EAS if an N-score is reported for a learning progression. A list of the allowable reason codes and an explanation of what they mean can be found in the table. Currently, there is no column on the bridge document that is available to record reason codes. As a result, programs must develop an internal communication process to assure that teachers are accurately reporting reason codes to their EMIS coordinator or the individual responsible for uploading student data in EAS any time an N-score is reported for a learning progression. Only one reason code can be reported for each learning progression, and a score of N. If multiple learning progressions are scored as N, a different reason code can be selected for each N score. You can find the non-scorable reason codes document on our website. We're going to walk through a sample student application now. 
After you create the student's individual application, click on the fourth tab, Progress Discipline. Click on the pencil icon next to the Fall or Spring Assessment box to input scoring information for the Early Learning Assessment. Please complete this section of the application between the date parameters specified for Fall and Spring. Enter the date when the assessment was completed in the Assessment Completion Date Entry section. Enter the corresponding learning progression scores for the 10 required learning progressions on the assessment. The assessment needs to be completed in both the fall and spring during the assessment windows noted on the screen. If the score was not able to be obtained for a child on one of the learning progressions, a score of N will be entered for that learning progression. If a score of N was entered, the program will be required to select the reason code that identifies why a score was not able to be obtained. A list of the available reason codes can be found at the link on a previous slide. Press the Save button. Please complete a test incident form, which is available on our website, if there are issues when adding early learning assessment scores. This form also covers incidences of missed deadlines or issues when creating student applications. Our website has a link to a tutorial that will guide users through entering student attendance. We're going to walk through a sample student's attendance now. Access the individual student's application and click on the third tab, Attendance. This tab is for the provider to enter the number of days and hours of attendance for each student. The entry field is not available until that month is complete. For example, February attendance fields will be available on the first day of March. Enter the days of attendance and the hours of attendance. Enter both the days attended and the number of hours attended. Don't count a day that a student was not in attendance during all regularly scheduled ECE hours. Some examples would be 10 days, 25 hours, or one day, two and a half hours, or five days, 12 and a half hours. If necessary, use a zero instead of leaving a field blank. For example, if there are only one and a half hours and no full days, then the days of attendance should be populated with a zero, and the hours of attendance should be populated with a 1.5. A full day is determined by your program's own schedule. Select the disk icon on the action column to save it. To erase the values entered in the fields before save is selected, hit the cancel button or undo. Select the pencil icon to change existing data. Congratulations, you have now entered student attendance in EAS. Now we have time for some commonly asked questions. Question one, I saw the percentage of poverty field. Can we use the free and reduced lunch forms to determine this? The answer is no, you cannot use that form. You must use the new enrollment screening form that's posted on our website to determine financial eligibility. Question two, can we upload any birth date documentation other than the birth certificate, hospital, or baptismal record? The answer to that question is no, you must use one of those three records to document the student's date of birth. Question three, I have a child who was still three at the cutoff date, but turned four last week. Why wouldn't EAS accept her? EAS wouldn't accept her because this child is not eligible for the grant unless she has an IEP. Then in that case, you would need to check the IEP box on the student application in order for EAS to accept this student. Question four, I have a child who didn't enroll in kindergarten because the family thought he wasn't ready. EAS wouldn't let me enroll him. Why not? EAS would not accept this student because a child who is age eligible for kindergarten is not eligible to be on the ECE grant. Question five, should I enter students who are not on the grant into EAS? The answer to that question is no. Only enter students who are eligible to receive ECE grant funds into EAS. Question six, I just checked the student has no middle name box on the student applications because it was easier. Will this be a problem? Yes, this will be a problem. The application will need to be corrected before it can be submitted. Question seven, when should I expect to be notified that the student is eligible? 
Programs actually determine eligibility at the local level. The status fields on student applications are for internal use through the process of SSID assignment and is not used to determine student eligibility. Again, you determine student eligibility at the local level. Question 8. What happens if the student's district of residence is different from the district in which the daycare lies? Can this student still be on the grant? The answer to that is yes, the student can still be on the grant. Question 9. If the student uses a different spelling of their name other than what is listed on the birth certificate, which should I enter into EAS? Enter what is listed on the birth certificate into EAS, even if it's different from how the student commonly spells his or her name. Question 10. Do we have to upload our sliding fee scale into EAS? This year, that is not a requirement. Question 11. I know that I'm in the right place, but EAS won't let me start a student application. What am I doing wrong? You likely haven't had your provider application approved yet. Please check the status of your provider application and follow up if any corrections are needed. Question 12. What do I do if the student comes up because he's already been enrolled in the grant at a different program? If that's the case, please make a note of the student's application ID number and email your regional specialist to complete the transfer. Question 13. Is there a deadline to enter EAS scores? The answer is that we have not yet posted a deadline for entering EAS scores. I will be the specialist to serve the pink area and Erin will be the specialist to serve the green area. For more information, please contact the Office of Early Learning and School Readiness. Thank you for watching today's presentation.